everybody. Thank you for joining me today. It's just me to start. Hi, Josh Massey, as always. And I'm just gonna give you a quick update about how things are going here at Gen Con, on the event side of things, at least. And then we're gonna be chatting with Jack Rita, who was a huge part of our Cosmic Odyssey expansion for Cosmic Encounter. So, super excited to be chatting with him. Great guy. But first, like I said, stuff we got going on at Gen Con here. We're at the final table for our Twilight Imperium tournament. Eight players duking it out for that galactic supremacy and fighting for that trophy, which if you haven't seen it, check out our social media. It's a pretty cool looking War Sun trophy. I'm super excited about it. Right behind me, we've got a bunch of people going with some Lord of the Rings living card game. And we just finished up and are about to start another uh, Twilight Inscription. So if you see people moving on that corner, I don't know how much of the frame is in there. Just know that that's what's going on over there. But like I said, the important thing for this stream and this chat today is Jack Rita. So we're going to show you a little video and then I'll be right back with Jack. See you in a moment. again it's still me hi i am like i said now joined with by jack rita Hello. the one the only jack rita and jack uh i wanted to start this off by talking about obviously we're going to talk about cosmic odyssey yeah. for sure we're going to get there but i want to talk about you to start okay so you and i we've interacted a little bit through email but today is the first time we've ever met face to face yes. And you're more impressive in real life oh than gosh. I would have imagined. <laughs> no. <laughs> but you, on the other hand, truly are. Like, thank you. It's been wonderful chatting with you this morning. I got to see you demoing the game yeah. and kind of over there and signing people's copies and stuff like that. So you got into Cosmic Encounter a minute ago. So you want to tell us a little bit about your yeah, journey sure. with Cosmic Encounter a as a little whole? bit. Um, I actually was in middle school in, in Detroit in the 80s when I was first introduced to what I like to call real board gaming uh, with the board game Dune, the original Avalon Hill Dune, which came out in 79. Um, my, I didn't even know what Dune was, uh, and my friends were like, just try out this game, it's great, and, and we loved it. We played it every week. Uh, and then my friend said, I have another game from the same designers. It's called Cosmic Encounter. Let's try that one out. And we're like, all right. I don't know what anything can dethrone Dune. Right. We never played Dune again for, with that group. I mean, I've played it again, and of course, I'm, I'm designing expansions for Dune now, right. years <laughs> later, but Cosmic Encounter captured my imagination in a way that I never thought possible. And then it was a game, it was like the first game that had expansions, and it had nine expansions, so the game itself was amazing, and then each expansion just made the game, the whole universe, bigger and more exciting. Uh, and it really was the first thing that inspired me to come up with my own designs for a game. So I was making up my own stuff for Cosmic Encounter when I was in high school. Nice. And it just, it just swept me away. And I have, I own every edition of Cosmic Encounter that's ever been published, including in other languages, which I know I will oh, never geez. open and play. And my wife is like, why do you have two different German editions of this game? And I was like, because. I need it. So I love this game and I and it's my favorite game because it's um, it's so many wildly different outcomes that you can have in a game. Oh, yeah. The play experience, it's fun while it's going on. It's um, 
completely social. There's virtually no downtime. Mm -hmm. I, I just love it. I have fun playing that game, even if I don't win. And I do win quite a bit when I play Cosmic <laughs> Encounter because I've cracked the nut. Um, nice. So yeah, just my pure love of Cosmic Encounter caught the attention of a lot of people in the upper echelons of the Cosmic Universe, uh, including the original designers. And mm -hmm. because of that, they asked me to join their company and help them design stuff in the future. And one of those things was a seventh expansion for Fantasy Flight's edition of Cosmic Encounter, yep. which I was basically put in charge of. And they said, unleash yourself and do whatever you want with this expansion. Yeah. And I'm frankly astounded that Fantasy Flight agreed to pack as much into that box as they did. It's really, it blows me away. I, I finally got to physically interact with the components this weekend and it's right? just it's just magical i love this expansion so much nice yeah i don't frank and i had talked about that and like when we did the live stream that was <laughs> the first time he had gotten to touch any of the components because everything had been done through tabletop exactly. and through just non-physical means and that's it makes a difference it right, really is right. just the, the tactical or tactile like oh you know uh, just the possibilities uh, in my mind uh, it's just limitless. Nice, nice. Cool, so that's a little bit about your journey. Yes. And I mean, honestly, about how dreams can come true, really, I let's know, be honest. it's great. That's awesome. And you've got to work with Frank. And Frank, Frank is great. He we is. love Frank. <laughs> Frank is, is a sweetheart. I don't know that he would want me to characterize him that way, but hey. that's just how it is. He He's far more organized than I am, so it was a really good synergy. And uh, he took everything that I turned in, and he really put not just polish on it, but more thoughtful elements to the gameplay, especially the campaign. Sure. Um, and I think it was smart to elevate the campaign even more because it is probably the newest concept for Cosmic Encounter. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'm just really pleased with all the stuff that's in there. It simplified a few things and yep. added some more bells and whistles that make the campaign special. So it's a treat and uh, I've been enjoying um, going through all the different things and seeing how it's going to work and I can't wait to do my first campaign. I'm all set. I've got a brand new gaming table with uh, you know the recessed nice. inseam and the lighting around it and I'm like, oh, Cosmic is going to be great. It'll feel very epic with yes, Cosmic and the gonna lighting going it's gonna on. Be great. Nice. And I do have to thank you. You just did one of the greatest things for my life. Oh. Frank the Sweetheart Brooks for every <laughs> live stream from now on. That'll be Sorry. Frank's lower third. <laughs> all right. So now let's talk about Cosmic Odyssey. Please. Okay, let's talk more about this. And you, when we were chatting just before we went live here, yeah. you mentioned something that just got my mind going to exactly what this is. This is our sampler platter. Yeah. Right? So tell everybody there what I mean when I say that, because I think it's the best part about this sure. expansion. So the, the, the theme of Cosmic Odyssey was that it's a journey through space and time and through the multiverse of all things Cosmic Encounter. So there are things in it that reference previous editions, including the original edition of Cosmic Encounter from 1977. And there are a lot of Easter eggs that reference stuff that's in there. Uh, but the other thing that it does is that it expands everything that Fantasy Flight has put into Cosmic Encounter over the years. So it, it takes all of those previous variants and it builds on them. And it's not just more of a particular variant, but it's new elements to that variant right. and new, new things and surprising ways that it can um, improve what that variant did before so it's even better than it was so even if you have no other expansions you just have the base game and you get cosmic odyssey you have something from all of those variants you can play with uh, a hazard deck and with the reward deck and with space stations and you can get a sense of that and the back of the campaign guide does a good job of saying look did you like Hazards? Well, here's where Hazards first showed up in Cosmic Conflict. Right. And it's designed to stand alone in Cosmic Odyssey, but it's also designed to combine. So if you do have that expansion, you should put those two things together and have a bigger Hazard deck or more space stations or right. an even bigger reward deck, in, including new surprises that show up in this camp campaign expansion. Perfect. So I'm going to be honest, probably more honest than I should be with them. <laughs> but. And maybe even with you, knowing your history with Cosmic Encounter. All right, thrill me. I hadn't played it until this year. Oh, well, yeah, I mean, you know, it, that's not a bad thing because for me, it's a treat 
to get somebody new into that cosmic universe to say, all right, what have I been missing? Uh, why is Tom Vassell always going on about Cosmic right, Encounter? Right. I keep hearing about it, but I haven't experienced it. And just to, to really immerse yourself in it, 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 it's magical. I mean, this is the game that invented variable player power as, mm -hmm. a, as a game mechanism. Um, and it, 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 it invented a lot of stuff that other games have since built on and evolved over the years. Right. So they were they were real pioneers, um, the original designers of Future Pastimes. They did a great job with that. So you're, you're like, it's like going back in time and seeing the origins of yeah. certain things that a lot of games that people know and enjoy now, like, okay, yeah, I love that sort of thing. And this is where it started. But the other thing about Cosmic Encounter is that it, probably more than any other game, it is about the journey as much as it is is about the destination. Right. I have so much fun playing Cosmic Encounter because there's no downtime. It's very social. Mm -hmm. um, even if I don't win, I, I, it's a memorable experience, and it's a story that I find myself telling other people, right. whether they know Cosmic or not, and especially if they do know. They're like, oh, we, we had this situation that happened that if we played it a thousand more times, we could never replicate it. It right. just could never happen again. It's just ridiculous. I've won the game without ever having a turn. I've played a game where everybody won. I played a game where Jeez. so many planets were destroyed, nobody could win the game. Oh my it's gosh. just a, it's a game that has these unique experiences um, throughout the game and not just how it ended. Right, and those experiences are a little more unique than what I told you about earlier. <laughs> I was just teaching some friends and they're all too nice to each other. Nobody wanted to be the villain. Yeah. So they're just like, come join me every single fight. We had a three-way tie for a win and <laughs> I was the only one that didn't win, of course. But yeah, so I mean, it's got a ton of stuff. Yeah. Like I said, it's my first time playing it was this year. Played it with Frank before the live stream and then got to add Odyssey to it. Yeah. Because it was just the core. That's all I had played with, was and our the, Cosmic Encounter. What's amazing about it is when you, you take into account all the elements that are in there that expand from the other variants, like you know, three times as many space stations and more technology mm -hmm. and more stuff like that, but there's new stuff as well. Right. And part of it is there are elements from previous editions of Cosmic Encounter, like the moons, and Lux is a reinvention of something that was called Lucre. Um, and those are very vibrant and robust uh, variants. But there's also stuff that's never been part of Cosmic Encounter, like the evolutions is a brand right. new concept yeah. that makes your ship resource suddenly critical. Whereas before it was like, all right, I got a lot of ships in the warp. It's not good, but whatever. And now mm. it's like, I can't be an ally <laughs> unless right. I've got more ships. So it's really um, a, just a new experience uh, in addition to a new flavor of an old experience and just a lot of ways to reimagine how you play Cosmic Encounter. Right. Great. So for those that have been playing forever and a day, yes. they've experienced all these things growing through the game, right? This is a great, not quite a capstone. I don't want to call it a capstone. But this product is a great way to like bring all those things back together, give you the campaign. Yeah. But for newer players like me and some out there who haven't played yet, it's also like the perfect starting point for yeah. a game that's been out for what, 45 years? Yes, absolutely. And probably one of the biggest strengths of the campaign is that a lot of people are like, all right, I've got all these expansions and I have all these variants and it can be a little overwhelming, you right. know, and, and certainly if you try to use them all at the same time. It's, I mean, it's modular by design, so right. you're supposed to say, all right, let's do this, now let's do that. Yeah. But the campaign prescribes exactly what you're going to yeah. use and it parcels it out in a way that's like, okay, it's challenging, but it's not too challenging. Like, mm -hmm. all right, we, we did this, we're going to use it again, but now we're using this, but then we're getting rid of that. And so... It, it tells you we're going to use moons. So you're like, okay. And then in the campaign guide, you can just say, all right, how do we do it? Great. Now we'll go yep. on to the next game. So even if you are new to Cosmic, you can jump right into a campaign because it, it holds your hand and it walks right. you through the process. It introduces the stuff that when you need to know. Yeah. And I think that that's spectacular. Exactly. So, Jack. Do you have any other thoughts before we close this out? I know we've been chatting for a little bit, but is there anything else that you feel you need to bring forth about anything with the with the expansion? I know we've talked a lot about it, but I don't want to just say bye, everybody, before you maybe have any kind of closing thoughts. Well, I mean, you know, the we always like to 
to think about what's the future, the future pastimes is our company, and we're, yep. we're, we're forward thinking. And I, I always hear every time an expansion comes out, somebody will say, well, there couldn't possibly be anything else after this. I mean, I think they've done it, but what I, what I will say is that we're always thinking about the future. We don't know that there ever will be another expansion after seven, because seven is a pretty crowning achievement. Right, but right. I will say there's one thing from all the years of Cosmic Encounter that has never been reimagined for the Fantasy Flight Edition, except that I've been working on it for the past couple of years, reimagining it, right. and if we ever get the opportunity to bring it out, I think it'll blow a lot of people's minds. So the gauntlet is thrown down, <laughs> Fantasy Flight. I challenge you to let us do this. But even if we don't, there is so much stuff in there that over 200 aliens. I mean, that right, alone. Right, that's bananas. 42 new aliens in this expansion. <laughs> yep. Just trying to do all the combinations of aliens because just a combination of these five aliens in a game, so wildly different from a different set of five aliens Absolutely. in another game. Um, it would take you a hundred lifetimes to just really get a full, the full spectrum of possibilities. So that is the other challenge to the cosmic community at large is do every experience and right. report back to me. Let me know how it works out. What unique experiences have you done? We've started a thing we call the, the bucket list of virtually impossible things that could happen in Cosmic, but they theoretically could happen. Yep. And you check them off when you finally done it. And we're just dreaming up, like, what about this, doing all this? And we're like, oh, I've done that. I'm like, oh my God, <laughs> nice. I thought nobody could do that. So yeah, it's happened. And, and um, yeah, we invite people. We're trying to build the community online more in Discord. So our Future Pastimes Discord uh, is growing. We have links to specific Cosmic Encounter and Dune ones as well. Nice. Um, and we think that we want people to keep home brewing. There's so much stuff in Odyssey that says, oh, this inspires me to do this or this, right. come up with my own evolutions or my own alien selection variants. And already I'm hearing people coming with their stuff and I'm like, that would have been great, you know, six months ago, right. but, <laughs> but yeah, but you could still do it. And we're living in an age now where it's so easy to implement those crazy new ideas and take them for a test drive. So Cosmic Encounter is the best game I've ever played for coming up with something crazy and new and trying it out. So please do and let me know what you think. Wonderful. Well, Jack, it has been an absolute pleasure, not just here and now, yes. but just chatting with you today. Yeah, I I'm thrilled to be here. Gen Con is such a great experience, and I love what you guys are doing here. Uh, whenever I can steal myself away from the booth, I love to check out what else is going on. So many amazing games and so little time. Yeah, I, I feel you. <laughs> all right, well, thank you again. And thank you all for joining us and hanging out with me and Jack. And we will catch you tomorrow at the same time for our closing of Gen Con. We'll see you then.